Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of interviewing and highlighting some truly interesting people. Everyone who is anyone, both the famous and the infamous, from presidents and their first ladies to kings and queens, movie stars and pop stars, captains of industry, heads of state, sports personalities, innovative entrepreneurs, and some pretty fascinating everyday people. Today, I am proud to introduce you to Anthony Amos, who believes that one needs to be driven by their passion in order to succeed. So Anthony, I am looking at your background and it is very clear you are an entrepreneur. How did you decide to go into business for yourself? Well, it all sort of started very, very young, which I didn't really know that it was going to be an entrepreneur, but um, I was really really engaged with rugby league which is your American football over here and it was something that I loved so much and it kept me out of trouble because I was a very active and naughty little child so my parents put me into rugby league and it seemed to be a match and they loved dropping me off at training and picking me up and it was a period of time that I really enjoyed so from I played from the age of five to the age of 30 years of age so it was a long time playing the game but in high school I excelled really well and I went from high school straight into professional football, which was a pretty big, pretty big deal back then, you know, going straight from high school straight to professional football. And I had a two-year contract and it was, you know, it was a bit of a big deal. But then what I started to realise when I was playing the game, I didn't like being told what to do. You ah, know? that's the sign of an entrepreneur right there. It was now professional and I was put into a basket, if you like, and if I wasn't, you know, fighting against my mates on the weekend to get the position to play the, you know, the um, position for where I wanted to play, then I didn't get to play the game on the weekend. So it sort of took the fun out of it as well. So what I decided to do was to um, go and purchase a hydro bath, which is something that you wash uh, a, a dog or a cat, if you like, and I put it in the back of a garden trailer that I had in my backyard. And I went around and I started washing people's dogs for $10 a dog. And I pretty much turned into a very, very successful business. And all of a sudden, Hydro Dog was uh, born. Which so is, you, uh, created, you created that whole mobile pet grooming right there. Yep, right there in Australia. Nobody had done it before. It was something that was done for the very first time. And um, basically, um, it turned into an absolute beast. I ended up having seven employees. So there were eight trailers on the road and everything was going fantastic. But then we started to realise that if you don't have any skin in the game, then that's when you start to see some problems in your business. So when it rained, they weren't getting out of bed. They were staying at home and watching a movie. When they got mm. drunk on Friday night, they didn't go to work on Saturday mornings because they were hungover. And even one of the girls who got pregnant, they ended up leaving the business because they were having a baby. Uh -huh. So I was in this position where now what do I do? I've got this, these people that I haven't got the passion that I have in my business. So we ended up looking into what's franchising, which is yes. what everybody knows now to be a, you know, an incredible way to do business. How long ago uh, was this, Anthony? Well, we, it, 94 is when I started washing the dogs and we ran the business for two years. And then it was about 96, we realised that you couldn't have employees. It just, oh. you, yeah, it took us two years to realise. I mean, you know. Yeah, you have to have you, I agree with you, when you call it skin in the game, if you're going, you need business partners, people who feel like they're invested in the business. So once you realise that, Tell me how you move the business to the next level. Well, basically what happened is we ended up going, I went, went back to one trailer. Um, now, you've got to remember, it's a trailer that's towed to the back of a vehicle. So you drive around and you can take the trailer off and on. And that was just basically a hydro bath. Um, and what happened was once, we went, once I got into the franchising side of things, I couldn't believe in my own mind that somebody would buy into my business that they could have gone out and done them themselves. But what I realised is I put all the systems in place. I put in exactly how you start from A all the way through to Z and they just wanted a turnkey operation and they were prepared to pay me for that. So they would pay me money. I would set up the trailer, set up their business model 
get them up and running. And now they've got their own business, but we're working under the same brand. And now we've got two on the road, three on the road, 10 on the road. And before you knew it, I had a hundred franchises. <laughs> and, uh, it was just, it was an amazing time of my life. What made you decide to take the business to the United States? My wife, God bless her soul, who's unfortunately passed away not that long ago, but she, um, she said, you know Hydro Dog so well, let's go to America. So we came over to America and bought Hydro Dog over here. And the long story short is, and the reason I have to say that, other, we'd, have, we'd be here all day, we found out that 5,000 dogs get euthanized a day. Now let's think about that for a second. 5,000 dogs get put down every day here in America um, because of euthanasia. So we decided to get a 40-foot RV, a, a really beautiful touring bus, and put, you know how we had the, I was telling you about the trailers? Yes. Well, what we, what we invented was a big blue dog that now goes on the back of a truck. So just like your Wiener Mobile, Wiener Mobile, we actually have a big blue dog, and anybody can Google it and see it. It's a big blue dog that sits on the back of a, a truck and it drives around and we go to people's homes and washes and grooms their dogs at their homes. So we put that on the back of this two of us and we went on the road and I said to my beautiful wife, let's do this for a year and a half. Let's show people we really care. Let's save as many dogs as we can. And, you know, let's do something of it. But I don't want to sell any franchises in that period of time. And she was like, well, you know, it's a, it'd be a really good thing for business. I said, I know it would be, but I don't want all the Americans to think, here come these Australians just going out there to set up this wonderful trip to sell franchises. I didn't want, I didn't want you guys to think we were just out there doing all this incredible work and saving all these animals just to sell a franchise. So... The concept was working great. Our, our, um, and you wait a minute. I want to be very clear. You're talking about the Bathe to Save tour. Yes, this is what I'm moving into now. Hydro Dog was the company that we brought over here, but now we moved into the Bathe to Save tour with our big blue dog on the back of a tour bus driving around the country, washing and rescuing literally thousands and thousands of dogs. And what happened was I said to my wife, it's only going to be a year and a half. Now, once we got on Larry King, Rachel Ray, Good Morning America, we got on all these morning shows, um, Animal Planet came out of the blue and said, hey, listen, we would love to do a six-episode series with you guys and do something special. So to this day, um, we ended up doing it for three years. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how we survived those three years. But what happened was we became so popular every time we went to any of the events, we were able to rescue every single animal that was up for adoption. How wonderful. And we, just, we just couldn't stop doing it. It became such, a, such an addiction. It had a really big influence on us. But what it did, it gave us a social consciousness mm -hmm. for our business that's so strong. When we talk about our company today, everybody looks us up and sees what we've done and what we're doing and they realise that animal rescue comes first. We want to rescue animals, but you can buy a franchise, you can replace the income that you're doing right now, and you can become an influencer in your industry and marketplace. And with your local communities, you can rescue all these animals and help these local shelters rescue all these dogs. We had such a big effect on, on people that couldn't afford to even put food on the tables of, of these animals. And that's why they were getting put down because they were so expensive to run these, these places. So we wanted to go into these communities and give back. And the more we gave back, the more it became more a part of us. And, you know, it's just such a, a sad and horrible thing. But um, my wife only passed away just a few months ago. She went in for a simple operation and basically had a heart attack and, and died. Oh. Just, I'm so, uh, sorry. No, not at all, um, Anthony. I'm a heart disease survivor, so I know that heart disease takes women. It's the number one killer of women. And I am so sorry to hear about your, your wife's loss, especially someone who clearly had such a big and beautiful heart that cared about so many people. So please take your time, sir, and know that I am thinking of her spirit 
um, that I know continues to run through your business and all you do. We've kept her legacy alive and we're going to be doing another um, series. It's going to be another um, 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 tour that we're going to do around the country and we're going to do it in, in the honour of Rachel's legacy. And um, we're probably going to do that as summer comes in a little bit later and just work out how that's going to look because now we've nearly got 100, believe it or not, of these big blue dogs out there. We're starting from zero, remember, and now we've nearly got 100 and all the people that are coming into the business love animals, love animal rescue. They're all family orientated. They want to replace the income where they were working before. And they don't want to be told what to do. They want to run their own business. So um, tell me your future plans for Hydro Dog. I know that we started with the master. That means there are 50 states in the United States. What's your plan? Well, that's it. So basically... There's currently 20 master franchisees out there. And amongst those 20, um, there's around about um, nearly 80 franchises. So in total, there's roughly about 100 franchises in our business right now. But unfortunately, we've had a little bit of a hiccup. Um, COVID had a big effect on the, um, the building of our, our vans. Our vans, in because we put the big blue dog on the back of vans, there's been some trouble with China and the microchipping. And I don't know if you know much about the industry, but it's been really hard to purchase the vans that we need to be able to buy the, the, the big blue dog to be able to run the businesses. So we're slowly getting through that hurdle. And it's going, every single, this is what blows me away. Every franchisee that's on the ground right now that has a big blue dog, they are doing um, unbelievable numbers that just would blow your mind. We have a girl up in North Dakota. Let's think about this for a second. Hello, everybody at North Dakota up there. Um, she started her business in minus 20 degrees in wintertime. And you know how much money she does while she does her um, um, uh, saving of the dogs. She does her bathe the save events. All franchisees do bathe the save events every month. Even in the cold, we get the, we get the job done. And basically what's happened, um, this girl has worked so hard. How much money do you think she makes every month washing and grooming dogs and still doing bait to save events? You got to tell me. You have to tell me. $20,000. So (laughs) the math works. The math really does work. And I have to tell you, um, I shared with you that I'm a heart disease survivor, Anthony, and one of the uh, treatments after... Um, my uh, physical therapy was to be prescribed a service animal. So I have a dog. And when I tell you, she literally saves my life. She literally saves my life. And so you Uh, are preaching to the choir right here, right now. In Rachel's memory, um, my best to your boys. Thank you, Anthony, for this really lovely conversation this afternoon. It has made my heart feel very good. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I can't believe the connection that makes my heart smile. And it's so nice to end on that note. And thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. And remember, get out there, don't shop, adopt. I love it. Thank you so much, Anthony.